A video package for Blood and Guts. And then the Blood and Guts match. It was long. They did three minute intervals, which was it's too long. But on the, on the, when you're doing commercial breaks, you basically have to because that's how long a commercial break is. So the the heels would come out, and then like the entire heat segment would be during the commercial break. Uh, was incredibly violent. Uh, they did a halfway good job of doing the basic concept of a war games match, which is. Every time a guy hits the ring, his team is losing, and then he gets in there and cleans house and turns the tide. This happened for the elite. They were always losing, and then Hangman Page would come in, or the Bucks would come in, or, or in the end, uh, Ibushi would come in, and they would run wild, and they would turn the tide. It didn't work that way for the Blackpool Combat Club. Most of the time, when their guys got in the ring, the Babyface comeback had, had, had run its course, and they'd already taken over. So it was kind of flat when they came in there. Uh, there were weapons galore. Well, let's start galore. with Kenny Omega and Claudio as the first two guys yeah. in. It was five minutes of good wrestling, sure. but there was nothing, there was nothing outstanding. Yeah. Pa comes in next. By the way, was there a coin flip? Or do we just assume now the heel team? I don't remember wins. hearing anything about a coin flip, but yeah. I mean, this was the way it should have been done. But it is, but we, we, it's just now it's just, it's just accepted. The heel team was the Presumably there was a coin flip. Maybe they did it on a rampage or something like that. Oh. But if they did, they should have showed it or told us about it. Pack looked awesome. Bach was great. God damn, he looks awesome. And then uh, Hangman entered after Makes, the commercial. Yes. He looked good. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it all turned around when all Moxley came in. And he immediately goes after all of the baby faces with his screwdriver. Sure. Now, my only issue with this is he's fucking hammering people with the screwdriver. And then he starts forking these dudes left and right. But nobody is bleeding. It was a long time before we got any blood. And when it did, it was Moxley. So I don't know why, you know, don't stab someone with a screwdriver unless they're going to bleed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that should be a serious deal. So then Mox pours broken glass all over the ring. Stu was wasting no time with the carnage. And so then Nick Jackson comes in, and this guy made the fucking best, whatever you call it, uh, entrance into a War Games match you ever saw. He's just fucking running wild. And he's flying all over, and he's hitting all these big spots, and this place is going crazy. And suddenly, Max uh, Mox grabs him, and fucking backdrop suplexes him into these fucking pile of glass. And I thought, oh my god, we're not even in the match beyond yet. No. no. So he's got fucking glass in his back, and then Mox puts glass on his chest, yep. and starts chomping it into his chest. Yes. Stomping it. Fans chant, "You sick fuck." Well, yes. Kenny then gets suplexed into the glass. Yes. Now there's people with glass, just like there's glass everywhere. Yes. I also want to mention right before the glass stuff uh, started, the the Blackpool Combat Club team briefly got the advantage, but then Claudio and Pac screwed something up and start shouting at each other. Yes. Place in the finish. So Wheeler's in next. This whole portion during the break, Matt Jackson comes out next. And uh, at this point, despite all of the forks and screwdrivers, Mox is the only one bleeding. Because, as Excalibur notes, it's a day that ends in a Y. <laughs> well, yeah, because at this point, like, he walks through the airport scanner and he starts bleeding. So then out comes Takeshita, and he starts waffling dudes with chairs. Takeshita, the only guy who's going to be in a hurry to get to the ring for his team, because they were losing when he came out and he had to go save them. Callus joins commentary, yeah. and then Moxley goes into the ring, and he comes out with... A fucking bed of nails. Sure, okay? why not? Hmm. What do you mean, sure, why not? <laughs> that ever, was the announcer's reaction. You ever gone to the fucking bed of nails store? I have not. No. Well, there ain't one. Yeah. So, if you want a bed of nails, you know, and it's not 1895 in a Midwest carnival circuit, you actually have to make it yourself, okay? So, they had the prop department make them a bed of nails. Okay. And uh, in hindsight, if you're going to have the prop department make you a bed of nails... Maybe you should have them make you a fake one <laughs> because this was an actual bed of nails. Now, the bed of nails is an old carnival trick. Sure, sure, sure. Because the nails are so close together that if you lay on the nails, you will not get punctured. Right. And then the old trick used to be you would lay on the bed of nails. The cinder block. They would put a series of cinder blocks yeah. because, in fact, the more cinder blocks you stack, the less the person on the bottom feels. And then, of course, you break that top cinder block, and, it, and it's like, my God, that guy was under eight cinder blocks and smashed into him in that bed of nails, but nothing hurt. Well, they had a bed of nails, and, uh, and uh, you know, it was uh, Omega. He gets thrown into the bed of nails. 
and he hits it flat, which is how you want to lay on a bed of nails. Yeah. Everything was great. But then he starts to fall down, and the the uh, bed of nails bounces off the ropes, mm-hmm. and this fucking bed of nails fell down and sliced this poor motherfucker from... It raked him. God. It, it hit him like in the shoulder and slid down his arm. And you could see he immediately is like, what the fuck? And he's bleeding everywhere now. Yeah. This would not have happened with a gimmick bed of nails. No. So he's dead. And then uh, finally out comes Kotobushi. And uh, God bless Kotobushi. And genuinely, God bless this poor guy. This guy... Let me tell you something, everybody. And, a lot, and some of this is, is personal stuff, so I won't say too much. Not personal to me, but... Kotobushi had so many things in the last two years that were just so bad. There was There was mental stuff. There was physical stuff. There was physical stuff that all of you listening to this probably heard about. And there was also physical stuff that you guys never heard about. That was really, really bad. And if you recall, you could always look at Kotobushi, and it's like, my God, you know, this guy looks like he's 25 years old. He was, he was 39. He was 40. Well, now he looks 42, and uh, and he is 42 or whatever he is right now. But he's he's heavier, and he's slower, and you know, he's trying to do his stuff. But like, I mean, it was it was kind of a little bit sad, you know. And part of it was, you know, he'd only had two matches in the last couple of years. But, I mean, still, even even that, it's like we've seen guys come back that haven't had matches in years. And, you know, I mean, I, this is a horrible comparison, really. But look at Trish Stratus, who came back after God only knows how long. And she re- wrestled the exact same way she did before. Kota Bushi came back, and he can't do, like, a third of the stuff that he used to be able to do. But the people go absolutely crazy for this guy. And he made his comeback, and the people are super into it. And then uh, now it's the match beyond. So uh, Matt and Wheeler end up on top of the cage, and Wheeler uh, takes the rolling northern light suplexes, and Matt goes to throw him off, but but Wheeler avoids it, slams him, and then starts climbing down. The fans boo, nobody dying. Yeah. That was not nice. Well, this is the same. Fans. Well, yeah, we'll get to the fans later, but... Matt poured thumbtacks into the ring from above. Pac and Claudio take bumps into them. And by the way, this Kota Bushi is one of those guys, uh, when the sh- when the uh, match was over off air, just because yeah. he's Kota Bushi, yeah. he just took a giant back bump into he, the tax. He swept all the back bump, uh, the tax into a pile, stood next to them, and just threw himself into the tax for fun. Yes. He's a true lunatic. He, he is, he is a, a lunatic. So uh, then we had blood, we had tax, we had glass, we had a bed of nails. And first, these fucking fans start chanting, we want tables. And I'm like, why? Even the announcers at this All point. of this shit that you've had in yeah. this match, and you fucking want tables. And this chant lasts literally about, I'd say probably five, ten seconds. And then there's a pause, like everyone in the crowd suddenly thought, wait, was we on tables? And so there's a pause, and then they start chanting, we want fire! Yeah. They smartened up. They didn't get fire. Pac did a swing off the top of the cage into a double foot stomp, putting Nick through the table. We had a 10-man brawl. Everybody's hitting a big move on everybody else. And then finally, Claudio goes to hit the uppercut in the corner, but he hits Pac. Pac has had enough. He starts shouting at Claudio. He does the double bird. Fuck you guys. I don't know why I was on this fucking team in the first place. He, he goes to leave. And I don't know why he couldn't just leave because, like, Matt and Yuta had gone up and down or whatever, but yeah. now the door's locked. Sure. So he goes into the ring, he gets the clippers, he opens the door, he leaves. At this point, Don Callis notes, this is not part of the strategy. Exactly. Well, I now, hope not. Now it's no longer five on five because a guy bailed. It's, yeah. it's five on four. So Callis is like, I'm getting my fucking guy out of here. So he calls Takeshi to get out of the ring. So now it is five on three. The com- Blackpool Combat Club is fucked. They handcuff Moxley to the ropes. Callis demands Takeshi to leave the cage. They use a thumbtack shoe on Yuta, choke him to death with the chain, and uh, we did not know at the time, but the finish is that Moxley surrendered to save the life of Wheeler Yuta. I thought that the uh, the last three minutes, because this was live and they were going to go off the air, they started fucking rushing. And, you know, the Pac thing, the Takeshita thing, it, w- it was all too rushed, and nothing had time to sink in. 
And then, you know, we didn't even understand the finish until the announcers explained it later. So this would have been better if they would have hit that time cue a little bit better. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, I thought this match was, it was a fantastic match. Aside from, um, and I heard from from people today, like, they're hurting. Okay? Oh, I'm sure. But there, no one was injured. Okay, and and every year somebody gets like injured. They, were, injured. they read the list of from last year, like like three different guys needed surgery after blood and guts exactly. Last year. Yeah. And now it's like you know they're all walking around kind of like filthy. I don't a think a little <laughs> bit forward a little bit, and they got shit that their wives had to take out of their backs or whatever. And you know I'm sure Moxie probably feels like shit. He's all cutting everything like that. Yeah. But in general, like everybody is alive. I don't think it was Ortiz or Santana that blew out his knee at Blood and Guts last year. I don't think it's come back yet. No, it was Ortiz. Ortiz, yes. Uh, no, was it? I think it might have been Santana. I forget actually. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad news. It was bad, bad news. It was Santana. Okay. So let's see. Uh, that all happened. It was certainly not boring. It was not the best War Games match I ever saw. It sure as hell was not the worst. It was not the worst Warriors where, where, where match I ever saw. It may have been the weirdest because you had so many weapons in there. You had uh, so much complete insanity with the, with the glass and the bed of nails. You didn't even mention the part where uh, Matt's, I think, it was, yeah, Matt Jackson's alone on the roof because Wheeler has climbed down. And uh, conveniently, he has found a bag of thumbtacks. I mentioned that. The, 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 when he dribbles them through the roof? Yes. Okay. Uh, and how Claudio and Pac were set for pile drivers, but they are distracted when it starts to rain thumbtacks on them, so they stop. And then they are backdrop into the tacks that are just falling through the roof. That was a new one. You know what actually I didn't mention either, which uh, you guys should go back and watch this one. Probably the closest that anyone came to getting seriously injured Nick. was of all things... Nick Jackson yes. is going to get press slammed into the side of the cage. Yep. And all that happens is you hit the cage, which is, you know, uh, bouncy chain link. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. dad used to build chain link fences. We used to do cage matches and you kind of bounce and you fall into the apron and it's just whatever. But uh, there was enough room that he is expecting to fall on the apron and he fucking fell between the cage and the apron. Both his feet, both his knees between the cage and the apron. I have He's... no idea how he did not shatter his fucking leg yeah. or break his hip. or And you can see, like, when he lands, this, this, these guys are, uh, you know, what's what's what, what are they, what's the, uh, Christ, uh, I forget what they say they are. Christian for life? Christian AF. Oh, yeah, Christian AF. He, he was not Christian AF in this moment. He starts he fucking... Heavy on the F. <laughs> God fucking ah, shit, fuck a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. And it looked like... I, was like I Oh, God. I bet it's one of those things where he thought he was hurt real, real bad. I think he probably thought that he had been uh, like Darth Maul Crippled? in that Star yes. Wars where he got chopped in two. <laughs> yes. And then... Which, uh, by the way, apparently they put that fucker back together later. Come on. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not... Jesus, God, are you kidding me? No. But Yeah, uh, that's the story. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, th I think he thought he was hurt real, real, real bad. And realized, well, that sucks, but it could have sucked more. There was that one. We did, they did, we had the reunion of the Golden Lovers in this match. The first match they've had in five years, since December 2018. And if you're watching this and you didn't know that, you would never know it. Because Ibushi gets in there, he throws some kicks, and he kicks Moxley into the uh, bed of nails. And there's Kenny, and they look at each other, and they just start doing stuff. There was actually no no payoff of that. They're, they're just a team again. I like this guy who goes, this is Dagan. Yeah, Darth Maul survived because he got robot legs. He didn't lose his fucking legs. He got, ch his self got chopped. He got chopped right down the middle in two. He got a robot pelvis as well. Come on. You know. That's bullshit. I mean, uh, so. Next thing you'll tell me, Palpatine comes back. God. That'd be insane. That'd be insane. So we had all the, the glass and tacks and nails, and yes, the, the, the Boston fans, and it's not their fault because all, all wrestling fans do this. All, the wrestling fans start to demand tables. And uh, I'm at home on a Wednesday night, and the show is not live on the West Coast. So I watch it Thursday anyway, but even if I wanted to watch it live, I couldn't. But I'm on Twitter, and I'm seeing every wrestling personality I follow on Twitter say the same thing. You stupid fucking fans. They're doing things a thousand times more violent for tables. Why do you want tables so much? But they do. And even the announcers, Taz is pointing out, guys, tables are so much easier than what they're actually doing out here. And they got wanted fire. And uh, this match was like probably a half hour. I had to do the math. It was like a half hour before everyone got in there. You could actually win. And then like 10 or 15 more minutes passed before anyone actually tried to win. 
And then there's a spot where the uh, the Blackpool Combat Club, everyone goes for submission at the same time. And uh, Ibushi has to run wild and, and save everyone. And then he's noted. Pac gets pissed at Claudio and leaves. Uh, Callus realizes this is a lost cause. Let's get my guy out of there. He takes Takeshita. They leave. That's when things go like really weird. I don't even know where the shoe came from. There's one more violent thing to throw in there. And uh, you can do this kind of thing where the, the, the baby faces ha or have the heels outnumbered if you take it home right away. But they went for like five more minutes in there unfairly beating these guys. I wanted to give Wheeler what he had coming. Well, yeah, we, Wheeler's a little busy. Maybe Daniel Bryan sent word. <laughs> you know, I hadn't uh, thought of that. Little fucker. That, 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 I can't right. be here, so give him a number for me. But they're throwing him into the thumbtack shoe. They're choking him with a chain. And yes, we are then, well, the, the bell rings. And then we are told Moxley has submitted. And uh, it was a awesome TV match. It was not the best working match I ever saw. It felt. It just felt like a random garbage match. And more than the payoff to a blood feud and, and, and all everything that, that it had been built up to be. And then I heard about the post-match. I'm very happy none of this made TV. I don't need to see teams after War Games of Blood and Guts shaking hands after they kill each other glass and and uh, attacks and whatever the hell else they used. And I don't need to see a guy just taking bumps and attacks for fun. It, that, that's just freak show stuff. I don't need to see any of that. But uh, anyway, that was Dynamite. It was not dull. Yeah, I thought it was an excellent, fun show, is what it was. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.